Lucky Shot brings you this episode of the QA. Good end of the month to you. It is the last Monday of October, which means it is time for the QA. Now, I've gotten a lot of comments, questions, messages, all sorts of stuff that uh, we'll kind of wrap up here in a little bit. And uh, I've also gotten some messages based on my like singing and things like that. So uh, I was told not to sing. However, uh, C, Fair, and H liked the singing, so I don't know. So instead, let's start off with a dad joke. It is the last Monday of the month, so uh, we'll do a Monday dad joke. If Sunday and Monday were to get in an episode of fisticuffs fighting, who would win? Sunday, because Monday is a weekday. My name is Dave Tim from Guns and Tactics. Thank you guys very much for spending a few minutes of your day with me on this episode of the Q8 where we answer your questions. As always, if you want to get your question on the show, the best way is to email us. The email address is shown below. Otherwise, it is the QA at gunsandtactics.com. Again, email us. Best way to get them on the show, they come to my inbox. Uh, otherwise, I do try to do a comment cleanup section where I kind of go through some of the comments from last month's QA and if there's any other comments I remember. However, uh, best way is to always email me because sometimes you know, things are harder to, you know, keep track of. That being said, I do appreciate the QA viewers. Like I've said many, many times before, you guys are the inner circle of the circle of the guns and tactics community. You're very loyal. You're uh, wonderful viewers. It seems like I have a good core following of the QA. So thank you guys for that. I sincerely appreciate it. Real quick, an update on the 50K giveaway. As you know, we hit our 50K subscriber benchmark. We're actually closer to 55,000 subscribers now, which is awesome. However, with the current situation in the industry, uh, stuff is super hard to get. We have not forgotten about the 50K giveaway, so we will still do the 50K giveaway. I'm just waiting to get some of the prizes that were kind of, uh, I don't wanna say promised to us, but a lot of the companies that were on board are basically saying, hey, we're still on board. We're just having a little bit of delays, meeting demand, things like that. And rather than give us something for free, I don't blame them for wanting to try to sell stuff and you know keep their paying customers happy. So we are still going to do the 50K giveaway. The prizes are gonna be awesome. Stay tuned, I promise it is gonna happen. We're just a little behind. So that is that. That being said, a little comment cleanup from the last month's QA. Um, yeah, people have asked, uh, they do do a little gunsmithing. I'm not hard to find. I'm in Minnesota. You can Google me, whatever, you can find me. Uh, generally, it's by appointment only. I'm pretty busy with video work and local work, so I don't take a ton of stuff on. And then I also do have a full-time job. And I'm gonna start teaching again next year. So right now I am in kind of course development and presentation development, lesson plan, writing, all this stuff. So I'm pretty busy. Uh, but yeah, that's, uh, that's how it goes. So 2021 is gonna be a busy, busy year, it looks like. All right, now. Uh, first off, MedFloat, I apologize. Yes, your comment, your question did not make it last month, but it will this month. And I have two dogs here that are now wrestling. So if you hear some, some scuffling around, it's just my two dogs. Anyways, uh, yeah, that's about it for comments. Uh, John made a comment regarding the other viewers. Magwell wouldn't drop mags free of lining the Magwell with automotive finish wax. Yes, great idea. Um, Glock mags. Back in the day, some Glock mags would not drop free, so I know some people would take like Armor All or another wax type polish and polish the mag well of their, uh, inside of their Glock to get mags to drop free. So yeah, some of that stuff is a great, great you know life hack. So nothing wrong with that at all. So that's again, what I appreciate about you guys kind of coming together, leaving comments to try to help each other out, which is uh, super awesome. Hey, go lay down. Sorry, pups are wild. I have two puppies that are like seven months old. Um, come here. Come if you guys want to see him quick. Come here. And come on, Zen. Come on. And this is this is Zen. So these are a very hectic, very hectic part of our life, but good additions nonetheless. All right, go lay down. There, letting you guys in on the inner circle. All right, let's get to it. All right, this first one is from Dan. Tim, with all the act, it's Dave. Dave, Tim, seriously people, we got to get this right. Kids are nice, they name me twice. I get that I have two first names, but Dave. With all the accuracy shooting you do, do you reload? I'm gonna start reloading for my 300 blackout, 301 mag, looking for some tips on a good single stage setup. Also, does your department reload training ammo looking to do cost reduction? So, 
Uh, first off, currently I am not reloading. As I steal the joke from my friend, the only thing I reload is magazines. However, it is something I do want to get into, especially for a precision rifle. So right now I am kind of in the hoarding and saving brass mode. Every 6.5 Creedmoor round that I fire and every 308 round that I fire, and then some if you guys are watching this who were just at sniper school with me, uh, know that I like to collect brass because I'm going to start reloading someday when I have more time. I used to reload back in the day and my single stage setup was actually an RCBS Rock Chucker Supreme with the digital scale. It was a great setup. It allowed me to, you know, really focus on precision versus, you know, like bulk output or high output. And there are main two reasons you know why people would reload number one they want to reload in bulk and save money handgun rounds rifle practice rounds etc or number two they want to hand load so they can get the absolute most out of precision and accuracy out of their rifles which is why i'm eventually going to reload rifle rounds center fire rifle so that being said uh i really did like my rcbs it was a good setup back then. I don't know what exactly is current now for single stage, but for precision rifle, I'm still probably going to lean towards a single stage press, which means you're doing one thing at a time, just because I want to be able to control that precision and that accuracy and make sure that the quality control is super high. Now, my department, uh, we don't reload training ammo. We don't have a person to have the time to do that. Uh, I know there are reloading machines and things like that, but uh, before COVID, we were actually getting our rounds relatively well-priced, even below like state contract and stuff. We were basically getting them at wholesale pricing. So we were able to buy, uh, buy cheap and stack pretty deep kind of leading up to this, which is good because right now, as you know, ammo is tough to find. So yeah, duty ammo will remain manufactured, of course. Uh, however, we also are running factory practice ammo because we were able to find it reasonably and come 2021 we'll see what happens so we'll see what the pricing and availability is like but really good question and uh, dan is a fellow leo from uh, another state so hey i appreciate it stay safe out there appreciate what you do if you think of it if you want to shoot me a shoulder patch that'd be all right i have a special section that's not available on camera uh, for viewers and students uh, who are kind enough to send me patches i do appreciate that kind of stuff all right this one is from Thomas, um, this is kind of a deep one, man, and I, I didn't know if you were serious or not, uh, but it basically is, should I get a divorce? And, you know, my editor wrote me a little note, you know, take some time on this one, and I think it's it's good. And if you're joking around, man, um, I, I guess I don't really understand the joke, but if you're serious, man, I, I know 2020 has been a rough year, and it sounds like it's a rough year for you. So I hope things get better. I hope things uh, are able to work out and I hope you're able to figure out what's best for you and your family. Obviously, that's not a decision that you should take lightly. It's a, it's a pretty serious decision that has probably, you know, a lot of influence on a lot of different things. So uh, I guess I would encourage you to, to really maybe talk to somebody local to you face to face that might be able to help you out with some stuff that may be able to give you some different perspective, kind of look at things and just hopefully get the help that you need to figure out what is the best decision for you and your relationship and your family. So uh, I really hope things get better, man. I, uh, I know 2020 has been rough on us all, but if you're going through this as well, if you're even thinking about that or having to struggle with that or whatever, I can't imagine the stress and the added challenges that are added to your year. So Tom, I, I really hope things get better and I hope things work out for the best for you. And, uh, just try to keep your head up and keep moving forward one step at a time, man. It sounds like there are some rough times ahead and I, uh, I sincerely wish the best for you. This next one is from Chris, C. Farron H, who does like my singing, by the way. Great content. Uh, question about suppressors, looking at the OSS versus the traditional. Gonna put it on 300 blackout uh, pistol he's gonna be looking at building and also do the 30 cal cans perform well on 223.556. Uh, great questions. First off, OSS, the rumor is they are making some awesome suppressors. Their flow-through technology, every feedback review that I am getting from like other people who are using them have wonderful things to say. So on my very short list of suppressors to acquire is an OSS to try it out for myself. The, uh, the straw that kind of broke my back of adding one to my collection of suppressors was when I was working with the guys from JP with the LRI 20 and they were saying, yeah, if you're going to get a suppressor, you should get OSS and JP does not associate themselves with uh, companies that just aren't making the very best of things. Now, I really love my dead air suppressors. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see it, but back there, um, 
is the Nomad tie on my Precision 308 gun that I just got back from school with. Super awesome suppressor. Learned a lot about it. Uh, I have really good things to say about dead air. I love dead air. However, I do think I'm gonna give an OSS a try as well just to see, especially on like a gas gun, you know, that that gas pressure back that you generally feel when you shoot ARs, I've heard is, is absolutely amazing on OSS. So I have heard great things. I'm gonna hopefully try one here shortly, but uh, I'm definitely gonna be picking one up. Now, as far as 30 cal cans, uh, as you know, I run dead air. Dead air makes 30 cal suppressors in their Sandman line. So I have a Sandman K, S, and L, and then the Nomads. However, the 30 cal suppressors don't run as good as a dedicated 22 cal. So if dead air did come out with a 223 dedicated suppressor, like a Sandman 223, I would buy it tomorrow or today. As soon as if it came out today, I'd buy it today. Uh, what I have dedicated, basically my K is kind of a dedicated 223 can for me. I put the 223 front cap on. However, I do need a flash hider front cap for that because it still barks, which is still, it's a great can for what it is. It's a small size can, but it still does have a good amount of flash. And when I look at a suppressor, I don't just want it to suppress sound and you know that concussion, but I also would like it to suppress flash a little bit as well. So I would say a 223 specific can will perform a little bit better. However, adding that front cap on like a Sandman S, super dynamite setup, rock solid. And then you could also, assuming you remember to change the front cap, you could also run that on your 300 blackout pistol as well. I uh, have, would have no issues with that. In fact, on my 300 blackout pistol, I've put my Sandman S Works great. Before we answer the rest of our questions, let's go ahead and give a shout out to Lucky Shot. Lucky Shot makes some really cool glassware and gift items for the shooter in your life, whether it's that special guy or gal. If you have a shooter in your life and you're wanting a gift for them or just a really cool gift for yourself, don't hesitate to check out Lucky Shot. USA company made with safe bullet items, all sorts of cool things. Lucky Shot is also offering a coupon code to our viewers. So if you want to save a little bit of money on that gift for yourself or the loved shooter in your life, go ahead and use the coupon code shown on the screen right now for a little bit of a discount. And plus one lucky viewer and question asker on the show is going to be getting a prize thanks to our sponsor. Check them out online at luckyshotusa.com and check out all the cool stuff that they carry. Thanks again to Lucky Shot for supporting this episode of the QA. All right, this question is from Mike. I'm building an AR-10. It'll have an 18-inch barrel, air, arrow lower, loophole two and a half, offset. What range should I zero the iron sights at? I will only use them for short range. Uh, I would zero your scope at 100 yards for a 308. I'm assuming it's gonna be, you didn't say the caliber, so I'm just gonna assume 308. And then as far as the iron sights, if you're only gonna use them at short range, well then yeah, maybe a 50 yard zero would be okay, but keep in mind with a 308, with a 50 yard zero, after 50 yards that trajectory is gonna go above the line of sight. So if you're a solid enough shooter where you feel you can zero at 100 yards, I wouldn't hesitate to zero those iron sights at 100 yards because then with a 308 from zero to 100 yards, the uh, path, the trajectory path is going to be pretty much in line with the point of aim, point of impact out to about 100 yards. You can run it through a ballistics calculator and kind of see what the offset is, measure the offset, put in your velo uh, velocity, things like that. But uh, yeah, I would, if you can do 100 with a 308, that'd be just fine. That's what I would probably run if I had iron sights on a 308. This one is from Grand Puba. Grand Puba? Grand Puba? Grand Puba. We'll call you Grand Puba. I understand all parts of the gun are important. If you were building on a budget, what are the top components you're spending the most on and so you consider vital to a proper functioning firearm? Can you provide a list? Uh, that's a great question. So as far as function, uh, it's very important to get a good bolt carrier. Uh, I have a couple here just for the next question. Bolt carrier group is really important. I do see, if I had to see failures of the AR, I do see some small things break like trigger pins. So getting a decent lower parts kit is not gonna add that much money. Like the difference between a cheap lower parts kit and a good lower parts kit is like 20, 30 bucks. So I'd say get a good lower parts kit so you don't have those issues. However, I do also see bolt failures. I see bolt lugs break, I see cam pins break, I see bolts break. The carrier itself are pretty solid. However, some are rougher. Uh, in machining than others and some are kind of sloppier than others but i would say a good quality bolt carrier group is kind of the core of a, a good functioning rifle so i wouldn't necessarily skimp on that and then as far as receiver sets and things like that 
Uh, some receivers are going to be held to tighter tolerances than others. Quality control is going to be tighter. But you could probably save a little bit of money by getting, you know, a lesser known brand. Or, I mean, honestly, some of the stuff from Aero Precision is super good quality. They're very competitively priced. They're uh, Hanson barrels that Aero uh, kind of works with. Good priced barrels, generally good performers. So you can look at good quality stuff like that and, you know, check out good sales. Black Friday's coming up. So if you can wait a little bit till Black Friday, I guarantee you there's going to be some sales. Keep an eye out for good companies like Rainier Arms on their sale items. Rainier Arms carries really good quality stuff, great customer service, and they do have sales and promotions. So make sure you sign up for you know their sales and promos to get some good deals. So that's what I would kind of do if I was really building on a budget is uh, keep an eye on sales, kind of be good. And also for good quality components, like say a Magpul stock or a Magpul uh, you know, furniture or a good quality handguard, don't be afraid to look at the used market either. A lot of people try stuff and sell stuff and take you know rifles apart and part them out and if you're buying good quality stuff and the pictures look good and it's from a reputable seller with some good feedback you might be able to save a lot of money by buying quality items used and they might already be you know scratched and dinged up a little bit but hey that's all right it's a workhorse just run it and shoot it so that's what i would do if you're looking at a budget look for sales look for good quality used stuff and uh just kind of be aware that sometimes you know buyer beware if it seems too good to be true it might be but I would say get a good quality lower parts kit, a good quality bolt carrier group, and uh, rock on. So yeah, good question, really good question. This uh, last one is from Jesus. What are mil-spec standards and how much testing does it go through to be considered mil-spec? That is a huge question that I'll kind of just probably scratch the surface with a little bit here. True mil-spec is based on what's called the TDP or the technical data package. And that technical data package is basically like the recipe to all the different secret sauce of the AR. Now it was developed by the government and it's only released to legit government manufacturers. So Colt, FN uh, are the two off the top of my head. I feel like there's one other uh, company that was making M4s at one point, but or M4 parts. But anyway, uh, what those companies need to do is they need to be truly legitimately manufacturing rifles that are supplied directly to the military and they cannot use that data to then sell commercial items. They cannot sell or disclose that recipe. But that recipe really then lists all the critical dimensions, the machining tolerances, the materials, the heat treating, the testing, everything that goes into that to truly be considered mill spec. Now, the only way that you're truly gonna get a mill spec rifle is if you're in the military and given it from Uncle Sam. Now, are there companies that are making components to mill spec? Yes, there are. Now, I would feel very confident in saying what used to be like Colt, I think some of their quality control has kind of gone downhill. However, you used to be able to get a, a Colt 6920 that was very, very close to a mil-spec M4, and it was a great quality rifle. Like I said, I've seen some stuff with Colt over the years that I'm not buying Colts really anymore. However, Generally speaking, everyone else in the industry, yes, there are blueprints and tolerances and specs and things like that, but really people had to kind of reverse engineer that to, in order to get a quality part because they didn't know the true dimension. So what they were doing is taking parts and measuring them and reverse engineering. Well, now companies with their R&D and engineering have really come a long way that in my opinion, there's a lot of companies out there that truly do exceed mil spec. So for some companies, mil spec is the ceiling. They try to build a gun as good as mil spec. Other companies look at mil spec as like the floor and say, hey, we can make this better. Uh, I, there's no doubt, I, I'll tell you right up front, I really like JP, I've been impressed now that I've been shooting their guns uh, pretty, I don't wanna say pretty much exclusively this summer, but I've been running a demo rifle this summer that I've been really, really pleased with. I've run their uh, Precision LRI 20, again, really impressed with that. And I've always had a lot of respect for JP rifles and their parts, but a lot of people associate them with just competition gear, but they're duty grade, and they are starting to supply a lot more government contracts, both federally and local state, and they're, they're really trying to exceed things in a lot of ways. So just take bolt carriers, for example. This is a JP bolt carrier. This is a standard mil spec type bolt carrier, and I would take the JP one every day. The improvements made to this, they've increased the bearing surfaces, they've uh, increased the smooth finish of it with a better finish, and overall, uh, the geometry 
and the machining on this, the quality control, this is just a super high quality part. And I kind of talked about this in my rifle setup video, a 2020 rifle setup video, which I'll put a link to up there. But don't be afraid to look at companies that are really kind of going above and beyond with quality control and innovation. So great question. Uh, how much testing does it go through? It depends on the part. Some parts are high pressure tested and then magnetic particle tested. Some parts are batch tested. Some parts are uh, not tested. They're just kind of basically spot checked, things like that. So it really depends on the individual part and how much testing has gone through. So that's just kind of scratching the surface. Mil spec is this whole debate. Now there's a lot of companies out there that say, oh, we make guns that are mil spec or this is to mil spec or whatever. But the reality is unless they're a military supplier, a military manufacturer, it's not truly mil spec. They might be going off what dimensions and specs they have and were they told were mil spec, but it's kind of uh, sometimes more of a marketing term. So that is a great, great question. So with that, let's go ahead and give away our prize. Random number generator is number four, which is that would be Mike, reference your AR-10. So Mike, we're gonna go ahead and reach out to you, get you an email, and then we'll get you in touch with Lucky Shot to get a prize coming your way. Again, thank you guys, I do appreciate it. If you wanna see your question, make it to the show, the best way is to email us. The email address is shown below, the QA at gunsandtactics.com. You can also leave comments, I try to respond, and I try to read all comments, I try to respond to as many as I can. But again, the best way to get your question on the show is that email, so it ends up in the inbox on the official list. As always, if there's any future requests, topics, things that you'd like me to check out, cover, whatever, or if you have questions for Rex, don't be afraid to address those as well. Uh, he has a wealth of knowledge and he is gonna be continuing to create content for us. So as always, I do thank you for spending some time with me checking out this. If you liked it, please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day. We work really hard to make content that we hope you as a shooter would enjoy. Subscribe to our channel, check out our featured videos and playlists, and if you have a question firearms related, go ahead and send an email to the address shown on the screen to be entered into our monthly QA series.